today's video we're going to look at how to set up a MIDI controller in disguise. If you're new here, my name's Rich and I'm making these videos to help you one up your live event production workflows. It's been a little while since we managed to post a video to the channel. I've been super busy touring again with Avenged Sevenfold, but we've also taken on a new studio space which is going to allow us to do more interesting and varied stuff for the channel. We can't wait to start working on videos for you in this new awesome space. We're also playing with the idea of sharing some vlog style updates. If you'd be interested in seeing some behind the scenes type footage, then we'd love you to get in touch in the comments or if you know me on other platforms. Lastly, we wanted to say thank you for continuing to tune in and helping to grow the channel. This will enable us to expand into our new studio setting, although you'll see from today's video, we haven't quite made it in there yet. Before we get going with today's video, I wanted to tell you about something exciting that we've got coming up. I'm teaming up with Disguise to do a masterclass on concert and touring programming. We'll be doing this as a workshop at Disguise HQ in London on the 8th of May. There's still a few tickets left and I'd really love for you to join us there. I'll leave the booking link in the description below. With that, let's get back to today's video. Something that I find myself doing while programming a lot of shows, especially touring projects, is setting up a MIDI controller so that I can have some physical buttons and faders available to me to control the show. Uh, this, is the, this is the MIDI controller that I really like to use. It's the uh, Novation Launch Control XL. Uh, we're certainly not sponsored by Novation to say that, but I do really like the size of the faders and feel like it has a good mixture of faders, uh, buttons and pots on the device that's not too big to throw in a backpack or toolbox. The other MIDI controller that I see a lot of people using is the Korg Nano Control. It's much smaller than the Launch Control, however, to my mind, I do feel like the faders are a bit short. I really like the slightly longer throw that you get um, on the Launch Control. As I'll show you, you can use any MIDI controller in disguise, you just have to set up the profile for it correctly. <laughs> Jumping straight into our disguise project, we'll go up to the Devices menu in the top bar and add a MIDI controller. Click a plus button to add a new device. In the menu that opens, the three of the available default devices in that list are MIDI controllers. So if you happen to have a Behringer BCF2000, an M Audio Oxygen 8, or an Evolution UC33, your day has just got a little bit easier as the layouts have already been set up for you. If I add one of those default controllers and then right click it, you'll see that a set of virtual MIDI faders, buttons and pots show up. There's a couple more steps required to link your hardware into your project, but we'll go through those in a second. But first, I'm going to show you what to do if your controller isn't one of the default ones in the list. Let's drag that BCF back to the minus button to remove it from our project, and then click the plus button again. This time, we're going to click the new device box and then give our new controller a name. Let's call it launch control so we know which device we're setting up. The next dialog that opens is a list of the hardware devices that you can add to your disguise project. We want to find MIDI device from that list. We can use the search bar to narrow down our options. Once added, if we right click on it, like we did with the default device, you'll see that the box opens is empty. We can add buttons, faders and pots in the same layout as we have in our hardware device. To do this, right click on the top bar and then select edit. At the bottom of the next dialog, we want to select the plus below control sets. The easiest way to think about a control set is a row of buttons of the same type. So if I hold up my controller, you'll see that we've got two rows of buttons on the bottom. As we build out our controller, each row of buttons is going to be a control set. If this seems confusing, I promise it will definitely get easier as we go. Right clicking on the control set, we'll choose CC button as my type and then add eight of them. As I add them, you'll see the buttons turning up in the interface, a bit like we saw with the default devices. We can repeat this process until we have a digital representation of our hardware MIDI controller. This isn't a super exciting process, so I'm going to speed up my video of getting this done. Okay, so now you can see we've got a digital representation of our launch control. If you have any of the default controllers, then this step of creating your own virtual controller is something that you won't have to do. However, it's useful to know how to create and modify MIDI devices, even if you don't need to use it right now. If I move one of the faders on my controller, you'll notice that nothing happens in our software device. There's still two more steps left before we can use it in our project. If we go back to the edit menu, you'll see that the MIDI in and MIDI out are set to not set. 
Left click the MIDI in and select your hardware controller. If you're not seeing yours in that list, Disguise only checks for new MIDI hardware when it starts. So it's likely that you connected your MIDI controller after you started Designer. Restart Designer and you should be good to go. You should notice when you add your MIDI in that your top menu gets a bit bigger to accommodate the new MIDI input device. If we move a fader or press a button on the device, you should see a green line underneath it. This tell us, tells us that Disguise is receiving MIDI information. With our software device open, you'll see that it's still not responding when we move our faders or press our buttons. If we right click a slider, then you'll see that when we create new controls, the default input is 00. If I move a fader, you'll see the message coming in is on controller 84 channel 1. So we need to create a link between our virtual controller and our hardware. The easiest way to do this is using the train button. Right click to open your fader, press train and then wiggle the fader on your hardware or push the button and Disguise will learn which hardware fader you want to link to your software device. A bit like creating the virtual MIDI device, this is a bit of a laborious process so I'm going to speed this up for you once again. Now we've finished training all of our buttons and faders, our device is ready to use in our project. Let's add a video layer so we can hook it up to our MIDI controller. It's going to be useful to keep our virtual MIDI device available to us, so we're going to make it a sticky window. Press Ctrl on your keyboard and left click the X in the top corner. You should see the icon change. I'm going to attach my first fader to the opacity value on this video layer. To do this we press the Alt key on our keyboard, then left click and drag from the fader to the opacity parameter. You'll notice that the parameter goes green to show that something's controlling it. We can now move our fader as the timeline plays and control the opacity of this layer. If you change your mind and decide that you no longer want your opacity to be controlled by your fader, Right click the opacity parameter and where it says expression remove the text that starts with scale MIDI device. If we click away that box should return to its default value which is self. There's actually a lot of other things we can use expressions for in disguise but we're going to have to save that for another video. Before we stop here let's look at how we can use MIDI buttons to control our timeline. Right click on your transport in the top bar and where it says event transport open that up and we'll create a local transport. Name it something sensible and choose Event Transport MIDI Note from the menu that appears. At the top of the box that opens, we'll need to tell Disguise which MIDI device we want to use to control our timeline. I'm going to choose my launch control again. Below that, you'll see a list of commands that you can use within the Disguise timeline, like Play, Stop and Next Cue. A bit like we did with our virtual MIDI device, we can click the Train button to teach Disguise which button we want to use for each command. But wait, there's more. There's one more way in which I'd like to use MIDI within the Disguise timeline. With a MIDI transport controller added, we can use MIDI notes to jump to specific cues. To do this, we'll first need to know the MIDI note that gets triggered when we press a button on our controller. The easiest place to find this is if we go back to our virtual MIDI device, when I press a button on my controller, you'll see that the bottom of the virtual device, a message pops up to tell us what it's receiving. You'll see with the button that I'm pressing here, we get MIDI note 43. We'll need that in a second. Let's right click on the timeline and where it says tag, instead of TC for timecode, let's click it and change that to MIDI. Now in the text box below that, let's add 43. This is the MIDI note that we want to trigger the cue and then press OK. If everything's gone to plan, you'll see that every time I press this button, Disguise triggers the playhead from that tag. So there was a lot to get through today. We created our own custom MIDI device and hooked it up to our hardware controller and then used it to control a video layer. We've looked at some simple MIDI note transport controls and also tr triggering specific cues using our buttons too. Thank you for watching and supporting this channel. Please leave a comment if you have any questions about this video or if there's anything you would like to see on this channel in the future. Don't forget to check out our masterclass on the 8th of May. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know it's our next video. From everyone here at the Hive School, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.